Hello and welcome to this session in which we'll discuss the concept of data breaches. What are the different types of data breaches and what is the cost of handling data breaches? So what is data breaches? It's referred to the security incident where an unauthorized individual or organization access or extract sensitive, protected or confidential data typically without the consent of the company through a cybersecurity attack. So basically, you have someone that's stealing or accessing the data that they're not supposed to. And this data can include personal information, they can access names, email addresses, social security, financial information, as well as more important information like proprietary information, intellectual information, security information, so on and so forth. The implication of data breaches are far-reaching because it could affect company's proprietary asset or its competitive edge. It affects not only just the organization that suffered the breach, but also individuals whose data is compromised. If we look at the Equifax breach, well, it's not the Equifax as the company was affected. The people lost their, their privacy, their social security and their addresses and their names were basically stolen, so it affects other people. Sometimes the data breaches could affect national security, so it has a far-reaching consequences, and that's why it's being tested on the CPA exam. As CPAs, we need to deal with privacy laws, data breaches, so on and so forth. Therefore, it can include identity theft, financial fraud, privacy violation, among many others. So in this session, we're gonna look at the two types of data breaches, differentiate between the two, then talk about the cost. Starting with the two type of data breaches, we have intentional data breach and unintentional. And basically they're explanatory, but we have to look at them. And we're gonna look at what motivates an intentional and an unintentional, what are the, the various implications for each, and what are the preventive measures. Let's start with unintentional data breaches. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Usually this occurs from human errors, the people made a mistake, or the system itself fails to, to conduct the transaction as expected, which is process failure. Now here we're not, we are not trying to do anything wrong, it's without any malicious, malicious intent. Common scenarios would include misdirected emails. You send some sensitive information to the wrong person. You did not secure the database. You lost a device containing some sensitive information. Or by mistake, you posted some confidential information on public forum. Now, also, this unintentional data breach could be done by, as I mentioned, human error. The classic case is when uh, Hillary Clinton, what she was using when she was the Secretary of State, she was using her personal email, which is, what does that mean? It's not as secure as her government email, it's a human error. Obviously, she was not charged, but nevertheless, it's a good case. The implication, although there's no malicious in intent, the consequences can still be severe, especially in terms of privacy violation, potential financial impact, or in case of Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, national security. This may erode trust in the organization's ability to safeguard data, even if the data is not exploited. And if that happens, well, it's not good, although it's not, it's not intended it's not it's not you're trying to do something wrong but it's going to give you bad publicity how can you prevent something like this well preventable through improved training make sure people like for example the secretary of state make sure that you, to, to use her email better operational processes data handling policies and the use of technology that flag or prevent potential breaches like data loss prevention systems again we'll talk about prevention about cybersecurity attacks later on but this is just a, an idea and regular audit and review of security practices will help identify and rectify any potential weakness in procedures and system so this is unintentional then we could have intentional data breaches this is totally different this is where the person trying to steal the information 
This is often perpetrated by hackers or malicious insiders. It could be someone inside or an outsider with the intent to steal, sabotage, or misuse the information, the data. This could be part of an organized crime, corporate espionage, state-sponsored attack, or action by hacktivists. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to give you another example, political example, but it's, it happens to be because maybe it will stick. In 2016, during the presidential election campaign, the Democratic National Committee staffers, some of them, they revealed their passwords. An investigation showed later on that was, you know, R Russian government. They send emails, ask them to update their password, and guess what? They did indeed provided their password, and this is how supposedly the Russians were able to access the DNC, the National, the Democratic National Committee uh, information. Again, just whatever it's worth, but that's that's a real case. So you could unintentional data breach can be done through phishing, and there's all sorts of phishing in the case of the Hillary, in the case of the DNC when the Hillary Clinton was running for president. Again, there's many type of phishing, but it was called spear phishing attack and we'll talk about different different phishing types uh, you can do it through malware we'll talk about malware later on the point is it's unintentional man in the middle attack our common method we'll talk about all of those later on the implication here is more severe because someone is intentionally trying to harm you in terms of damage caused as the data is often exploited that's the reason they want the data it's not like a data breach happened and no one is looking the data breach happened and someone is gaining information for financial gain to cause reputational damage or for some other malicious purpose and this can lead to series of cascading effect like identity theft financial losses strategic disadvantages like in politics or for some companies competitive disadvantage or national security as in the case of hillary clinton and the dnc prevention measure could require robust security measures including advanced threat detection encryption strong access control and security awareness for the staff we'll talk about how to prevent those later on this is just an idea legal measures like non-disclosure agreement and strict access privileges can deter insider threat if someone is working for you now let's talk about the cost of data breaches it's very costly but we need to break down the cost into its various components it can be financially devastating because it involves various costs and those expenses could vary depending on the nature of the breach the type of the data involved who's the hacker for what purpose, the number of records compromised, how sensitive is the information, the country's regulation, if they impose penalty on you. Let's break down those costs associated with data breaches, and we're gonna break them into seven different costs, detection and escalation, notification, post-breach response, loss of business and revenue, increase in insurance premium, intellectual property loss, and reputation loss. And they all kind of work together, starting with detection and escalation. These type of costs would include activities that enable the company or the organization to detect and report a breach. And that costs money. Expenses can stem from forensic expert, investigation, what's, what happened, you need to understand this, who's, in, who's affected, and the initial effort to stop the breach and secure the data. So the impact, the effort requires substantial resources here. You can pay money for this. In complex system where identifying the breach source might take some time so company might need to hire external team specialize and pay them premium to get to the to get the attack to stop which is going to add more to the cost a case in point is the target breach in 2013 the company incurred a substantial cost of detecting and understanding the breach and if you want to read about it obviously any any case that i mentioned you could read about it separately on google but target many companies get get hacked all the time but those are major cases once that happened you have to notify the people involved and that there is a cost for that notifying affected parties is mandated by law such as the gdpr in europe which we'll talk about that later on and various state laws in the u.s and this process include legal reviews communication method how are you supposed to notify them emails letter calls and sometime the establishment of help or information centers for confer for concerned individual because if your social security was hacked part of the Equifax breach, then you're going to be concerned. You need some uh, personal data protection plan to help you, to help protect your identity online. And the company will have to pay for that. The impact here to properly notify affected individual can result in fines and penalties. Guess what? Increasing the cost of the breach. You already lost. 
And now if you don't notify properly, there's other costs involved. Aquifax in 2017 affected approximately 147 million. So what did Aquifax did? Offer those personal data protection security plan for the people who are affected. And the company had to set up communication channels to inform the affected customers, which will take money and time. You also have a cost for the post-breach response. These costs would involve action in repairing the system itself. Now we know what happened, now we need to fix it. Restoring the data, that takes time and money. Every time we say time, it's money. Implementing new security measures. We don't want to stay the same, we want to kind of have more robust security measures. We have to incur legal expenditure for potential lawsuit. People, people will sue you and the government will impose fines. Those are post-breach responses. Also beyond the direct cost, you know, effort, the, the effort will be diverted from staff because they have to work on this, which is unexpected, potentially affecting productivity and operational efficiency, as well as morale. A case in point is Sony PlayStation Network breach in 2011, where the company faced extensive costs related to legal consultation, settlement, identity theft protections for users, because that's what you do. Usually you just offer them identity theft, improve security infrastructure and regulatory fines on all parts of their post as all as a as a response of their post breach response also what's going to happen naturally your insurance your cyber security insurance which is already very expensive will increase think about it if you have a car accident what happened to your insurance it goes up when you have a cyber security breach you might have insurance you you should have insurance but after the breach the insurance premium will go up Organization with cyber insurance may face increased premium following the data breach due to the perceived high risk. No one's going to insure you unless you pay more. And this is only going to add to your cost. <laughs> so you're going to have to budget more for cyber security. And in the aftermath of the Yahoo data breach, which affected 3 billion users, the company suffered a significant loss of business. People left Yahoo also as a direct impact of this. Verizon was trying to buy them. And after the breach, because the cost of the company went up, it was 350 million reduction in the acquisition price. And we're going to pay you less of 350 million because now we're exposed to this risk. Loss of business and revenue, of course, that's going to happen when you have a data breach. Post-breach organization often face diminished trust because less people is going to go to Target because they don't trust their credit card machine, le leading to loss of customers, contract termination, and difficulty in acquiring new business. Now you have a bad reputation. And this includes the increase in customer acquisition cost to regain market share. Then you have to spend more money on public relationship, on marketing to get back the customers. This could be most significant long-term cost because you don't know what the impact of it especially if the breach harms the organization reputation and this is the most important once your organization is known for this everyone will stay away from your customers suppliers even people who work for the company may not be comfortable because their names social security addresses pay resides on that company's database so the loss of customer loyalty and trust can impact revenue for years also you could use intellectual property well, if a breach involved the loss of intellectual property, which is an idea, a secret formula, algorithm, that's also important. The cost to a company can be immense. You could lose your competitive advantage. If this is your competitive advantage and someone stole it, it's done. This could potentially also include the loss of future revenue streams, R&D investments, it's basically gone, someone else is using it, or your strategic market position if you have an advantage through that intellectual property. Also, the loss of customer trust, that's the most important. They might lose the trust because they're not comfortable. They don't trust you with the data. And this could lead to customer discontinuing the use of your company product and services, which is the loss of revenue. It's all interconnected. For example, if a bank suffer a data breach, which is very bad, customers might worry the security of their funds and personal information. Doing what? Transferring their, their money to another bank, to another competitor. And this could also have negative public perception about the company. Recruitment challenges, who wants to work in a place where they're known for their data being stolen? And most importantly, as we mentioned, losing your competitive advantage. You're gonna have a competitive disadvantage at this point, a quote, competitive disadvantage. You would use your advantage. What should you do now? 
go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs that's going to help you understand this important topic, data breaches for the CPA exam. Invest in yourself. The CPA is 10, 15, 20 year investment. Whether it's going to take you a couple years to finish it, it's worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.